Hello and welcome to another video from The Scottish Gamer. Today we're taking a look at Warzone solos and how you can get more wins by analysing the winning strategy that I'm going to showcase to you on screen through my own personal gameplay. Now, this Warzone solo victory isn't the highest kill game ever with 9 kills. However, what I do want you to see is how I rotate through the map and how I make those all-important decisions that ultimately lead to me winning this Warzone solo match. The first decision that you have to make on any single game of Warzone is where to land. Now, most players will land on a contract looking to stack up some fast cash, or they'll land in the centre of the circle, but those strategies just don't work for 99% of gamers. And here's why. Because if you land in the centre of the circle, for the entire game, you are completely surrounded. If you land on a contract, that's going to be a high traffic area, meaning that loads of gamers are going to land in the same location as you, and you're going to have a pistol shootout, and you're going to have a 50-50 chance of whether or not you survive to actually claim that contract. So what I like to do is choose a location that's outside of the circle, but not too much. Somewhere I'm not going to get caught by the storm or get forced to run out in the open in order to not die in the collapse. A building that's big enough and likely going to have enough loot to get me equipped to survive until the loadout drop. And I always want to have a buy station en route between me and getting inside that circle when I'm running away from the storm. That means that I'm going to be able to loot, grab some cash, and then grab UAVs, loadouts, or whatever else from the buy station before getting to that first circle. Meaning that by the time my loadout drops, I'm already equipped for any gunfights that may appear. One of the things you may notice while watching this video is every time I come across a Claymore, a Bouncing Betty, anything like that. I instantly equip it and drop it on the spot at a doorway or a staircase or some kind of high traffic location and then pick up whatever tactical and lethals I want to carry with me. That way, the likelihood is it may get you either an indicator by causing damage or it might get you some free kills. And it just means you're going to know whether somebody's rotating behind you, coming through buildings that you've already been to, while you're rotating towards the inside of the circle. Another top tip for you to be aware of is if you hear any gunshots being fired, or on your minimap, if you see any red dots, which means gunshots are being fired, you just want to quickly pull up your tactical map and drop a marker on that location. It means that you're more visually aware of where threats could be coming from, Again, while you're rotating and while you're looting, grabbing the cash, grabbing the ammunition, the weapons, and everything you need to carry on and win gunfights. Now, at this stage, we're already on one kill. It has been quite a calm, timid start to the match, and that is because of the strategy we used to select where we were going to drop. The next thing you're going to notice is that even though I'm on my own, I'm not making a lot of noise. I'm peeking doors and not smashing through windows and barging through doorways. I'm keeping the noise profile to a minimum, meaning that I'm not attracting too much attention to myself where an enemy player could sneak up and get a real gunfight advantage over me. So I'm looting and getting prepared. The next thing I'm doing right now is I'm holding down this same location while I'm clearing it out for loot, waiting for people to rotate from the top of the dam. Now, if nobody comes, it means that the players are choosing not to rotate down this way. As you can see, the storm is currently moving. So if I'm moving away from the storm, then players could be rotating behind me. Now, I don't want to run straight into the circle every single time it moves. I want to rotate with the circle, but give myself a 10 to 15 second gap, meaning that I'm not going to be caught by the collapse, but at the same time, there's not going to be enemy players approaching me from behind. Now, as I start my circular rotation, I want to use what's known as a pinwheel rotation, and that is simply clearing a 45 degree angle in front of where I'm heading. 
That is making sure that I'm clearing the outside of the circle and inside of the circle on the rotation that I'm choosing. Whether that be clockwise or anti-clockwise, I don't want to rotate straight down the line into the circle because if I do that, it means I've got to defend from three separate angles. However, if I follow the pinwheel rotation and constantly clear out on the front of me, it means that I know nobody's behind me and I can easily rotate back and forwards knowing that that area of the map is clear. Now, a really important thing for you to consider when choosing which way to rotate round the map using the pinwheel rotation is play to your strengths. If you're better at clearing buildings, then make sure you go to a highly populated area such as downtown or look for those highly building orientated locations and rotate through there. If, like me, you prefer that open ground gunfight, whether you're a sniper or prefer distance gunfights, then rotate where there's less buildings and you're more likely to catch players out in the open. The other thing that you'll notice is anytime I come across an armour box or a stopping power rounds or any kind of tactical equipment that's going to give me an advantage in any gunfight, I use instantly. So I'm going to want to use those stopping power rounds, get them in my gun, and then I can pick up something else. It means that I'm always going to have as many advantages as possible when getting into any single gunfight. Now, as we've already discussed, I want to rotate round to hit that buy station now that I've got some cash. Now, I'm at this buy station, I've got some cash, and I want to quickly sweep around to see if I've got enough money that I can get a loadout. Now, if I don't, I'm going to grab some UAVs, a gas mask, a self-revive, and anything else that I can afford. However, if I can scoop together enough cash, I want to get myself my guns as quickly as possible. Because my guns are going to be far superior to anything that I'm going to find lying about inside Verdansk. And that's because they're customised to my playing style, they're weapons that I'm used to using, and it also means that they've got the full loadout of attachments and I'm going to get my perks. Now, the next decision we're going to have to make is whether when we get our loadout, are we going to go with Ghost or are we going to go with Overkill? Now, drop me a comment below and let me know what your preference is on the first loadout. Do you go Overkill or do you go Ghost? Now, me personally, if I'm rotating round in solos, I'm going to want to use Overkill. Because my player style involves me either sniping or pushing through buildings. Now, I want to make sure that when I get into any gunfight scenario, I've got the right weapon to be able to win that gunfight. However, a lot of players will say, go ghost. It hides you from UAVs, it hides you from heartbeat sensors, and gives you more of a sneaky tactical player advantage. For me, I actually want players to push me, especially once I've got my loadout. I want players to be running at me so that I can rack up those kills. And then on my second loadout, I'm going to grab Ghost. One thing that you'll notice here is I don't just simply run in blind towards my loadout. What I do is I drop that UAV, check that the coast is clear, check the minimap and the tactical map to make sure there's no red dots appearing, and I can then make a safe play towards that loadout and grab the guns that I want to be able to win this Warzone solo match. And that leads you to yet another decision that you have to make of what loadout do you select to be able to win Warzone solos. Now, I've got a whole playlist that showcases my favorite loadouts to use in terms of different playing styles, using the M4A1, the Grau, the MP5, the HDR, the AX50, every single weapon you would want to use and I'll pop a link to those videos at the top of the screen right now. Now, here's another little tip for you. If you're running overkill, you're going to have two weapons. You want to always have the right weapon out for the scenario that you're going into. So you'll notice here that I'm switching between my MP5 and my Grau, and I'm switching them between where I'm likely to get into a close range engagement, I'm going to have my MP5, and when I'm more likely to get into a medium to long range gunfight, I'm going to switch it off to my Grau, meaning that I'm always prepared no matter what type of gunfight I'm going to get into. 
Now, as we've already discussed, we need to be aware of our surroundings. So when I see a red dot appear on my minimap, I want to highlight that. I want to know where that player is and the likely surrounding area that they could be. So I'm going to drop a ping and then I'm going to head to that location while sweeping out other areas en route. I don't want to be caught off guard, but at the same time, I don't want to leave any player that could potentially sneak up behind me. So again, I'm pinwheel rotation back on myself, clearing out that 45 degree angle, clearing out all the buildings and making sure nobody has the opportunity to sneak up behind me. And while I'm clearing out these buildings and sweeping the area, I'm trying to stack together as much cash as I can get. And that's so that I can purchase more UAVs every single time. You want to get to the position where where you're buying a UAV, you're dropping that UAV out for use and buying another UAV straight away. That means that if you see a player on that UAV, when you get to that area that they were in, you can drop another one and get more situational awareness so that you can get an even clearer and better opportunity to win that gunfight. Now, as we move into the halfway point where 75 players there or thereabouts have already been killed, you're in the second or third circle and you've got your loadout and you're now kind of prepared to go hunting. And that's really, really crucial because so many players will start chasing down enemies before they've got their load out or smashing through doors and windows and making a ton of noise before they're prepared to actually take on enemy players. So, like always, we're making sure we're pinwheel rotation, we're keeping ahead of the storm but only about 10 to 15 seconds. We want to make sure that that storm is visible but at the same time we want to hit those UAVs. Now, once we get the UAVs, we need to decide what player we're going to go for. In this situation, we've got one player who's gatekeeping just inside the circle, so they're waiting for players rotating, getting chased by the storm. We've got another player who's out to our left, he's going to be rotating into open ground shortly, so that's the preferred target. We want to catch players unawares out in the open when we've got the advantage. So again, we're going to sweep that area, making sure we're not leaving anybody at our back and making sure that when we engage that player, we get every single advantage to win that gunfight. One thing that I see from players far too often is them taking too much of a passive stance, as in they'll start a gunfight and then they'll just withdraw. The problem is, is when you've got an advantage, you need to press that advantage hard. You need to make sure when you start a gunfight, you finish that gunfight. In this scenario right here, we've caught this player, we've weakened him, now we need to push him. But at the same point, we need to be aware of our surroundings, what gun we're using, are we fully ready for that gunfight, have we reloaded our weapons, we've got to make sure we're going to win. And that's exactly what we do. Now, another decision here is do we go straight to pick up that guy's cash and gear, or do we continue our pinwheel rotation, making sure that the area is clear and that no other players are going to sneak up and get that easy kill because they've heard our gunshots. In this scenario, we know there's another player lurking nearby because we've seen them on the UAV. And here he is. He's been attracted by the gunfight. Now we need to make sure we're using the right weapon and pick up another easy kill. Now at this stage of the game, our tactic needs to change slightly. We no longer want to be focusing on looting, instead we want to reload our ammunition, collect cash, collect equipment from the enemy players that we kill. Now these guys can still gulag back in, so once again, any bouncing betties, any claymores, anything like that, we want to drop it on their stash, meaning that if they come back to collect their loadouts, they're going to get a nice little surprise and hopefully we'll pick up an extra few easy kills. Once again, we're making that decision of which direction we're going to rotate throughout the map. We don't want to focus on going straight down the line, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we're inside that collapse and that we stick to the locations that have our strengths. So in this one-off, I'm going to clear left while working my way to the next buy station so that I can pick up some extra UAVs. 
Once again, we want to make sure that we've got that 10 to 15 second window at our back from the collapse, which is going to give us that opportunity to win a gunfight if there's anybody gatekeeping us as we approach the next circle. Whenever we ping a UAV, we want to highlight where players are and make our way to those locations. Just like in this scenario here, you need to be completely aware that enemy players could be using Ghost and therefore will not be indicated by any heartbeat sensors or even your UAVs. So you want to make sure that whenever you're in that location, you're always still visually aware of where players could be. Now, because a lot of players will use a similar type of strategy inside solos on Warzone, you need to be aware that buy stations are always going to be high traffic areas, which means that if you're on the hunt, moving towards a buy station is always a good idea, but only if you're visually aware. Now, always pay attention to your minimap for red dots and vehicles, always pay attention to your UAVs, and always make sure that you've got the right weapon out for the type of gunfight that you could get into, because you never know when something's going to appear right beside you. Now, at this point, we are four kills in, and we're just moving into the final third of the game, where over 100 players are already out of the game, and we're getting into that top 50 placement. Now, this is where the strategy needs to continue. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We want to carry on our pinwheel rotation, we want to make sure we're sticking with that 10 to 15 second gap inside of the collapse and constantly sweeping round the map, hunting for enemy players. Now this final third of the match is where you're going to get the majority of your kills. Because the map is smaller, there is more players in a smaller density situation on the map, meaning that you're going to get into more and more gunfights ever, ever quicker. So don't worry if you're at this stage in the map and you've only got one kill or zero kills, you are not camping your plane strategically, you're constantly on the move and you're getting yourself set up to win that final circle. And that's what's important. Now, in this scenario right here, we're in open ground with a lot of high ground around us, meaning that it's a prime spot for campers, for snipers, and for people just gatekeeping people approaching incoming from the circle. What is a priority here is your movement and visual awareness. When you're moving, you want to make sure you're not running in a straight line, you want to make sure you're ducking and weaving, you're moving from cover location to cover location, meaning that you're not going to be caught unawares by a sniper or someone just camping. At the same point, you're going to be able to catch people unaware when they're just sprinting across the street totally unaware of what's going on around them. So in this situation, once again, we've done the initial damage, we want to make sure we push our advantage and make sure that we finish off the kill. So at this point here, we're five kills in, 41 players left in the game, and we have this huge open road environment where we can really catch people unawares because everybody in this point off the map has to cross this road in order to get into the map. So we want to set ourselves up to what's known as gatekeep, which is where we are holding the, the ground that a player getting pushed from the storm must cross in order to survive. And by doing so means that we can pick up some easy kills and get some really strong visual awareness. So right now I'm making sure that nobody's gatekeeping me and then I'm going to turn around and gatekeep. Now this is one of the opportunities where you do slightly break your consistent strategy up into this point. But that's okay. As you can see, it's going to work out just fine for us. Now, I'm doing this for a crucial reason. I want to make sure that there's no players behind me as I rotate into the next circle. And as you can see, before long, there's this player at the top of the hill. Now, this player cannot stay at the top of the hill, cannot wait out, cannot try and get a sneaky snipe, because they are getting pushed by the circle. They need to move. So all I need to do is hold down this position, wait for them to be out in the open, and I can get a nice, easy kill. Now, this player that 
is at the top of the hill is obviously quite a good player because instead of trying to run across this open environment they try to rotate round again following that pinwheel rotation so I simply wait to make sure there's no other players coming across that crest of the hill and then rotate round behind that player and that is the crucial point because I am behind them I am chasing them I have peekers advantage and I have attackers advantage now if you're not aware Modern Warfare and Warzone is completely designed to give the player who is attacking the advantage. So always play the aggressor and never the defender because in that situation you're going to lose. Now I need to make sure that this player does not gatekeep me which is why I make sure to rotate inside of the circle before I engage the player to make sure that I'm not forced into a bad position before I can actually take on this gunfight. And as you can see, that's exactly what the player was trying to do. He was trying to get into a position where he could gatekeep me running unawares into the storm and flip the script on me. We are now six kills in with 30 players to go. We're in a strong strategic position and our loadouts just dropped. Once again, we don't want to run straight for the loadout. However, we do want to make sure we're using Ghost for that final circle. So all we're going to do is continue back doing the pinwheel rotation once again, making sure the peak of this hill is clear and we're not going to get shot in the back. Then we're slowly going to work our way into, grab that loadout and make sure we're set up for the final circle. Now, unsurprisingly, this is where a lot more players will die very quickly because, again, the map is smaller and there's a higher population in a smaller area. So you need to be extra careful for snipers, for campers, and for anybody else who's just trying to hold a tactical advantage. Those guys that perhaps landed centre circle at the start of the map and have just held down that position the entire game. The crucial step here is making sure that you constantly sweep behind yourself, making sure there is no player going to come behind you and again focus on that 45 degree angle in front of you, making sure there's no players and you're just sweeping, hunting kills and making sure you get into that final circle. Because if you're not in the final circle, you can't win the game. Now, another little tip for you here is if you see an enemy loadout drop, the loadout only ever drops within a 200 meter radius of your current location. So it means if you see multiple loadouts, you know there are other enemy players nearby. And a very common strategy for players is to just camp and overwatch an enemy's loadout, waiting for that player to go for their loadout and then pick up an easy kill, especially for players who are gulagging back in or people like myself getting set up with Ghost for the final circle. Crucially, again, when moving, move between cover to cover to make sure you're never caught out in the open with no viable cover to win a gunfight. Sliding, slide cancelling and even just moving in a zigzag rotation, all of these things are going to help you avoid sniper headshots. Now at this point here, your heart's probably pumping, you're close to that final circle, you've got a decent number of kills and you know that there's only 17 players left in the match and you're one of them. Now don't break the strategy. Just continue the pinwheel rotation, clearing out enemies as you get to them and making sure that you don't run out into the open and get sniped from distance. Crucially here is pick your shots. Sometimes you'll see players fighting other players. You don't want to down that player and give the player who was winning that gunfight anyway that advantage. What you might want to do is let that gunfight play out and then pick off the weak winner of that gunfight before they've had a chance to reload, before they've had a chance to stick in some fresh armour plates and again pick up easy kills. It's all about getting as many easy kills as possible. Now I'm going to let you watch the last three minutes of this video and see just how to get that all important solo victory. How to actually finish the final circle. Now, I would ask that if you have enjoyed this video or you've learned anything whatsoever, please drop me a subscribe, 
turn on the notification bell and don't forget to like the video. My name is The Scottish Gamer and I create Call of Duty hints, tips and strategy videos to help you improve your game every single week. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy gaming.